I'm going to hit the record button. Just realize I wasn't recording. So um, anyway, what I want to show you today is we did get questions, you know, people asking you know, about certain um, topics and whatnot, how to find trends, how to find entries. So we're just going to go through and do that. Now, I do have a certain style of trading myself. Um, I've really only got one way that I trade. I don't trade quite, um, you know, 10 different trading systems. It's all just one system. Um, let me just, I can't disable a naval waiting room. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've only got one style of trading, but, you know, obviously my style is not the only way. So now I want to show you guys and go through and just basic market stuff, right? How to find trends based on just literally no indicators, pure price action, right? Um, so before we do get started, I want to break down a little bit of misconception. A lot of people think, right? When we talk about price action, we're talking about candlesticks, right? Individual candlesticks. This candlestick versus that one, versus that one, versus that one. That's price action, right? Price action is purely candlesticks and not patterns, right? A lot of people think that I'm a price action trader. That means I trade patterns. Pattern trading is pattern trading, classical charting, right? Um, that's your head and shoulders, um, double tops, that sort of stuff, double bottoms. Uh, price action trading is ignoring all that and looking at pure candlesticks, right? Purely, just solely the candlesticks, regardless of what pattern shows. But mixing both together, obviously, is a big benefit. And I like to mix both, both together. Now, I'm only a trend trader. I do not counter trend trade at all. I've never seen a counter trend trade. And the way I reference a trend, right? A little bit different than some people. I don't use market structure to reference my trend. So I'm not going based on if price comes up, makes a high low, that's the start of a new trend. I go based on, when I can find it, the 200 EMA. So I use the 200 EMA to reference my trend, right? And price, as long as it remains above that 200 EMA on the daily chart, I'm only ever buying the market, never selling it. You'll never see me sell that market. So I've only got reasons to buy this now. That already takes a lot of subjectivity and guessing work out of the, um, out of the market and what I have to look. So I don't have to sit here and go, all right, do we have a potential short? Do we have a potential, you know, this and that? You know, what do I do? Do I buy, do I sell? Straight away, I can only see that I only want to buy because we're above the 200 EMA on the daily chart. Even if price came down to here, still only buying the market, I'm not selling it. Why? Above that 200 EMA. That is me, that, that's, that to me is how I reference the trend um, rather than market structure. So for this particular market, right? This is platinum versus um, dollar, US dollar. I'm looking for a buying opportunity, right? Very simple reasons I wanna buy. Obviously we're in uptrends, okay? So we can reference that. First thing we want to do is we want to go through and look at, you know, is there any support or resistance around where current price is, right? I'm not a big fan of placing all these different levels on my mark, on my charts. I don't like to have a cluttered chart. I just look at what's relevant. And what's relevant to me is one support level below price and my take profit level. And that's the only ones I use. I don't, I don't use it, you know, many other than that. So for this particular market, we already know that we want to buy it. We're above that 200 EMA, right? We have these nice high low formations going, right? Potential new high low here, waiting for the daily chart. Oh, again, also I'm an end of day trader. So it means I mainly focus on the daily candlesticks. I'm not a day trader, end of day trader. So I'm mostly focused on daily candles and sticks. And I like to try, I like to hold trades for um, a couple of weeks to a couple of days to months. Uh, longest trade being 11 months. Um, I like to try to write out as, you know, really long-term trends. So, um, so right now, how do we find a trade, right? This has got to be all based on purely the data chart. You don't have to go to the four hour look for entries. Don't have to go to weekly or don't have to go to the one hour to look for entries or even five minute. Straight up on a daily, right? So again, I did mention that we want to find price uh, support level just below the current price at the moment, which is right there. So let's just zoom in a little bit. We can see that price has had a nice rally. We had a little stalling point here, right? We broke out, we come back, we retest this level. That level is also a huge weekly support level. 
Rather than just remember with your levels, it's never an exact line. It's always uh, an area. So your levels are, are always an area. So it's that area that I'm looking at as opposed to just that line. An end of day trader is where you focus on the daily candlesticks at end of each 24 hour daily candle. The benefit is if you're very busy throughout the day, you're working full time, you're studying full time, whatever it is, it gives you a lot of time to, a lot of free time. You don't have to sit there and stare at the markets, you know, on the 15 minute chart and stuff. You can just straight up look at daily, no trade, move on. Very much less stressful. Very, 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 very much so. All right, so we know we want to be buying at this level right here. All right, we've got the support. Okay, next thing I want to do is I'm looking for price action. Not patterns, but price action. Um, patterns is like my, my last resort for trading. Um, if the pattern is there, then it's there. But if the pattern is not there, then I don't care. Right, I'm looking at pure price action. So I got to zoom in, right? I want to see the daily candlesticks. So we've broken up. We've come down for the last week or two. We put in a nice little rejection candle. Now, for those who don't know what rejection candles are, they've all got, uh, it, all these candles have different names. You don't have to know the names of every single candlestick. You don't have to know the names of pin bars, hammer candles, dojis, dragon. You just, to me, they're all rejections or engulfers. So rejection candles are your little, you know, little doji ones, that sort of stuff little things here and there, right? This kind of stuff, that's rejections. I'm just gonna make it a brighter color so we can stand out a little bit more. Um, you know, these are your little rejection candles, that sort of stuff. And we wanna look for these sorts of candlesticks in an area of support, right? Or resistance, depending which way you're trading, right? Because when we see a pullback into the area of support, we see the rejection, we see the clear uptrends, right? This gives us a little sign that, you know, price is starting to stall. We're failing to go lower after this big push. We stalled here. We're failing to go lower, right? And this could very well hold and we can start safely looking for a buying opportunity. From there, the only thing we need is an engulfing candle, which most people know what an engulfing candle is, like this big one here, right? these sorts of candles. And potentially, I've got two hours and 45 minutes to wait before I can potentially take this trade. I'm not going to jump the gun and take the trade right now because I've done that in the past. And all of a sudden, before the data candle closes, you'll see a big move down and it'll close right, right negative. So um, I always wait for the candlestick to close as hard as it is sometimes. So this, this mark is um, potentially going to buy it within two hours and 44 minutes. So the thing about the, um, the engulfing candle is what we need as a confirmation is it tells us that momentum is going to start pushing back to the upside. Um, so we have to push up, break down, um, break out, retest, rejection, bullish engulfer. That's your trigger to go long. Right there. Based on nothing else, right? No double time frame stuff, no... Uh, patterns, that sort of stuff. It's literally just, if this closes as is, it en has engulfed that rejection candle, I'm happy to buy it. I'll be looking to buy that. My stops will be under this candlestick right there, right? And my take profit, right? So let's just mark that out. My stops are going to be down here. It's on the daily. My take profit on the weekly will very much likely probably go right there. That offers a good risk reward, right? Offers a good risk reward to the upside, right? So that's all I'm gonna wait for, right? So that's my idea on um, the platinum against the US. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, platinum against the US dollar, right? And it's just just wait for that engulfing candle now. Now you can use other indicators if you want. You can use. Um, I do like to reference the stochastics a lot, right? I'll be overbought. So when we get a pullback in the direction of the trend. And we get this pullback rejection support level engulfer oversold stochastics that gives us a little bit more of a, a confirmation that price may want to go higher the trick about the stochastics though is not just overbought oversold like a lot of people teach you get into the oversold area but what you're waiting for when you get to the oversold area is that little pinch right there see how the green has crossed back above the red that tells us that the momentum is to the downside is stalled and we're gonna potentially get the momentum pushed back to the upside, right? 
you got to always wait for that little bit of a cross on the stochastics. Otherwise, it can just stay down here forever. Um, and it still can. So based on those few things, we can go safely, you know, go, we can start looking for a trade here. Um, Chiara, Chiara, I don't really trail my stop loss. Um, I'm not a big fan of trailing my stop losses or even setting my stop loss to break even. Um, I do trail stop losses on long-term trades, like trades that I hold for months and months and months. But apart from that, it's very rare that I, I, um, I trial my stop loss or even set my trade to break even. Um, how do you know the support zone will hold? Well, we never know, right? There's no guarantee ever in trading. It's just based on what I just basically um, outlined is it gives us an idea that the support is holding. The pullback, the rejections, right? The bullish engulfer. Because the rejections tell us that price is failing to go past the support. The engulfer tells us the bullish momentum has come back up to the upside. So you're not always going to get a very clear, perfect setup. Sometimes you're going to get, you know, multiple, multiple rejections. You might get four or five, you know, and then the bullish engulfer, right? I always say the more, the better, right? I, I prefer more than, than, you know, than less. Because the more that's there, it's showing us, you know, a bit more of a stronger support before we get that extra push to the upside. And then when price gets to here, if you get the rejection candles, bearish engulfer, I'm not going to take that because that is a counter trend move and I do not counter trend trade, right? So I would be looking to, for the breakout retest and continuation before I go for another long trade to the upside, right? Otherwise, I pull back to here where I'll buy again. But I'd never trade against that trend. Just my style, never done it, never will, never have, never liked it, never felt safe doing it. Um, all right, so that's for platinum. You're a dollar, a little bit more tricky now, okay? Let me just have a shot of coffee, hang on. All right, let's go. Um, you're a dollar, a little bit more tricky. Again, let's reference the 200 EMA for a second. Where you at? Okay. So as you guys know, this is the part that's gonna get really confusing for you guys. Because the way I trade, probably isn't as popular as the next way that I'm gonna show you, okay? So for me, I'm still looking for a buying opportunity. The daily is still above the 200 EMA. Until that daily, break, daily breaks down and retests and starts to continue down, like I did here, I'm still looking for buying opportunities, right? Until that happens. So what's my idea on your dollar? Basically, I'm looking for a 200 EMA retest. So I want to see price retest that 200 EMA, maybe put a rejection candle around here, put a wick through, pin bar back to the upside, something like that, when I'll start looking for that next push to the upside and look at buying it, right? That's what I'm going to do. That's literally the only analysis I have on this particular market at the time. And I'm happy to trade that. Now, the next way, a little bit more confusing, right? Because which way is right, which way is wrong? Well, there's never right or wrong in trading. You just trade your own system, right? Next way is the more popular way. Most people are gonna be drawing trend lines, right, in here. Most people have these trend lines in here, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't trade trend lines, by the way. Um, I don't even look at trend lines. It's not my style of trading. Um, never have, never really liked them. I find them too subjective. Doesn't mean they're not good, just means I don't use them. So this is what most people are gonna have, right? Most people are gonna have that, and then they're gonna have a support level down here, right? They're gonna have that little breakout zone right there. And they're gonna go, you know what? We may likely get a bounce at this little support right here. Push up, retest, push down, and look for a move down here where they'll rebuy it back to the upside. Okay. Which way is right, which way is wrong? Am I right? with my system or you guys right with this style of trading? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter because a million traders are gonna see this way and a million traders are gonna see my way and a million traders are gonna see nothing at all. The only thing you can do as a trader is to trade what you see, not what anyone else says. It doesn't matter what anybody else says in the world. It doesn't matter what Warren Buffett says. You trade what you see, right? Um, I used to, uh, now obviously I, I started trading way before 
Instagram or any social media sort of really took off. So I was never really influenced by what people were saying online about currency pairs, about anything. So it's probably a little bit easier for me back then, right? Because I wasn't influenced by all that. But as you guys probably are on Instagram, you've seen these traders' recommendations, all this sort of stuff. And you get a little bit confused. You might be short the euro and then another trader you follow on Instagram is long the euro. You're like, oh, should I be short this? Um, and you start to doubt yourself. You can't doubt yourself as a trader, right? The, the main thing you have to understand as a trader is that it doesn't matter how professional they are, every trader loses, right? Most traders, professionals, only have about a 50, 60, even 40% win rate. So most traders that I know win about 40, 50, or 60%, right? Between that, I'm around the 50% mark. So that means that I could lose out of hundred trades, I could lose, I mean, it's not gonna be exact, but you know, lose 50, win 50. Um, it's never an exact number, of course, might be, you know, win 43 and you know, lose the other one. Um, but the only thing you can do is as traders is control your risk, right? Control your emotions, obviously, and um, your discipline. Your discipline to follow a system. So a lot of traders, they, struggle with this little cycle where they'll find a trading system they will test the trading system they'll take a couple losses they'll get angry and frustrated they'll take a minute they'll find the trading system they'll test the trading system they'll take a couple losses they'll get frustrated and angry they'll find the trading system and you keep going around right you keep going around because you're trying to find a trading system that doesn't lose much and that's impossible if I lose three trades in a row, it does not bother me. And trust me, it does happen, right? It does happen. I have losing weeks. I even have break even or slightly negative months at times. Not a lot, but maybe one or two out of the year. Um, it happens, right? As a professional trader, we can't avoid that. We can just trade based on a system that we know works over the long term, right? So we know that at the end of a year or end of each quarter, we, go, we should make a profit. So I don't judge my trading based on each week or each month or every day. I base it on each quarter. How did I perform over the quarter? Right? Was I profitable? Was I negative? If I have a negative quarter, let's say Q1, I have a negative Q1. You know, it doesn't feel great, but it's not going to deteriorate me from trying to find a new trading system. Because Q2, Q3, Q4 could all be profitable from there. And that's what matters, right? So with... Um, with you guys, especially for some of you that are very new, you have to come to terms at one point where, what style of trader do you want to be? What, um, you know, do you want to be day trader? Do you want to be swing trader? Do you want to be counter trend trader? Do you want to be trend trader? So me, I'm a um, swing slash intermediate position trend trader, right? You guys might be a trend trader on the daily chart or whatever, you know? Um, there's no right or wrong. You just do what you feel comfortable doing. The next thing you'd have to do is you have to find a trading system that fits your personality type, right? Um, do you like to trade like I do? So I'm just gonna show you guys my system, right? This is my system where I follow the moving averages, right? And I'm always referencing those moving averages. So for instance, let's look at this point right here where price remains above that 200, uh, that, sorry, that red 20 EMA on the daily chart. At this point here, I sit on the four hour chart and I'm only looking to buy the market. Now take note that when price goes below the 20 EMA on the daily chart, I only sit on the daily chart, right? But here, four hour, so we can go to the four hour chart and start looking for buying opportunities, right? And we're just looking for buying on those pullbacks over sold stochastics. This is literally my whole trading system in a nutshell, right? We have the trends, we have the pullback, we have the oversold. That's where I'm buying it. Pullback, price section to sell, right? Pretty well oversold. And that's all I'm looking for, literally. When price go, goes below that 20 EMA on the daily, move to daily and look for the exact same setups, right? So here, obviously we're still looking for buying opportunities because we're above that 200 EMA. So that's my training system basically in a nutshell, but we'll forget that for now. Um, and your guys might be this one, right? The trend trading, uh, the, the, um, you know, the whole trend lines and the support level here and that breakdown there and waiting for the retest. There's no right or wrong. 
literally there's no right or wrong. I'm not right, you're not right. I'm not wrong, you're not wrong. You just trade what you see. Sometimes you're gonna win trades and I'm gonna lose trades. Sometimes I'm gonna win trades and you're gonna lose trades, right? It's all give and take. There's no perfect thing in trading. There's no holy grail, there's no nothing like that. As hard as it is in trading to try and find a system that just wins more than it loses. So for instance, out of 10 trades, you might win eight and lose two. That would be great, I'd love that. That would be so fantastic, but doesn't happen very, very often. Um, so anyway, breaking this down, you know, what style is right? Should you be looking at selling this? Should you be looking at buying it? That comes down to you. Um, head if we'll go over that in, 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 in a little minute. We'll do a little bit more of this stuff and then we'll go to my system. Let me just get to some questions here. Um, that trade timer, um, I'm happy to give, um, I, I do give it out to some of the um, A1 members. Sometimes very relevant people tweet stuff and it has an immediate effect on the market. Yeah, like, what's his name? Elon Musk um, and whatnot. Yeah, don't even follow, who cares about them? Um, do you close a trade before profit notice trend is weakening? Sebastian, so um, depends how long the trade is going. If I'm in a long-term trade, let's say I'm holding it for months and months and months, I will trail stop losses and just leave, let it and let it go. Let it hit take profit or my trailing stop loss. Um, and in, in general, I never close a trade early. My trade will always either hit stop loss or take profit. Reason being is if I sell it on, a, on this breakout, my stop loss is here, take profit is there, then that trade is not invalid until my stop loss is hit. So this trade can come all the way up, two pips from my stop loss and I'm still holding it because the amount of times where it's done that and then just come down to take to hit profit, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of time that's happened, right? So you, the whole idea of having a trading system and having your stop loss there in the first place is to, that's your reinsurance that your stop loss is, you get out when you're wrong. And until that stop loss is hit, your trade has not been invalidated yet. And that's what a lot of people struggle with, right? They'll, they'll see the trend starting to go against them. They'll be negative a little bit. I'll just close it now. And then all of a sudden it'll come around and, and you know, come down to potential profit. When you take the trade, you have to be willing to accept the risk that you've just taken. So if you sell it here and your stop loss is, let's say $100 and you take profits $200, you have to be willing to hit and lose that $100. Um, otherwise don't trade until you're ready, right? It doesn't have to be hundred dollars. It can be $10 or $5, $2, you know, whatever you're comfortable losing, but you have to be accepting that risk before you even take the trade. So you can't, you know, you can't close it early before you hit the stop loss or take profit because that invalidates your trading system. The idea of having a trading system is to have a slight edge over the market that wins um, you know, either a bigger profit than the loss and that sort of stuff, or a slight higher win rate and that sort of stuff. If you consistently mess with your trades and close them early due to fear, then you're invalidating your trading system. Your whole probabilities get thrown out the windows. So the probabilities of my trading system may be a 51% win rate with a bare minimum one to two risk reward ratio. If I was to consistently mess with my trades and close them early, then my win rate might only be 42% with a one to one or even 1.12 risk reward ratio. So very little, right? If I consistently close trades early. And that's the idea of where back testing and forward testing comes in favor. All right, let me quickly look at this. Um, Randall, with your style of trading, when you price above the 20, you may on the daily and oversold when you're at four hour. Do you wait for rejection? Okay. Yeah, we'll go into my in, in, in a minute. Um, please describe, yeah. Um, Guy on Euro pound. All right, so let's go do this on Euro pound. Alex, I pushed the record button. Am I a bad person? You are a very bad person. Um, Euro pound. All right, so Euro pound. Let's base it on my trading system because it's actually a very good trade for my trading system. So how would I break this down? Well, first off, the daily chart. Uh, we're in a downtrend. We can obviously tell we're in a downtrend because we have the 20, the 50, and 200 exponential moving average down. Price is holding below that 20 EMA. So we know that we, we want to continue selling this market. 
So all I need to do right now is just grab out a little bit of a support and go, where's my potential profit factor? My, my profit's down here. I'm not looking for anything short of that. Right. I don't want to, I don't want to take anything short of that level there because to me, that is the next big level where price will want to get to not this little, little levels here. All right. Price doesn't care about those so much. It's more so looking at these levels here. And that's where I want to look at taking profit, right? Next thing I'll do is I want to find a trade. How do we find a trade? So we're below the 20 EMA on the daily chart. So we can go on the four hour and we can put the stochastics on. We're looking for a little bit of overbought. So I did trade this last, I had a really nice run on this last month. Um, held it for, I think it was like two weeks. I, I forgot exactly where I sold it. I sold it here somewhere and took profits. I think it was around here somewhere from memory. Um, so really all I'm looking for is, is this, these opportunities right here, right? Price in the downtrend comes overbought, puts in the rejection, bearish engulfer. Um, overbought, rejections, bearish engulfer. That's literally all I'm looking for. So right now, ideally, I didn't get in on this one, but you know, would have been, you know, that wouldn't have been a bad trade right there. So at the time, earlier in the week, I was talking about in the webinars, this point right here, waiting for a retest, but we didn't get that. Right, because that's where I would have liked to sell for the decent risk reward. So all I have to do now is just wait for the next pullback. So now I just have to don't do anything. I'm not doing anything until we start to get a pullback and we start to get overbought. Rejection candles, bearish engulfer. That's it. It's all I'm doing. Now you can do it on the one hour chart, you can do it on the four hour, you can do it on the 15 minute. It doesn't matter. Um, trading system works on the same on all of them, right? This is the, so this was the four hour chart and this was the one hour chart. So you still get the same setups, right? You just get more of them, that's all. Um, you just don't hold your trades as long as you would on the higher time frames. See, they're the setups you're looking for right there. So there's not much analysis involved, which is what I like because I'm a very lazy trader and I don't like to sit there and break down markets. I'm just looking for a trade. So this one, perfect, right? Textbook. Push up, rejection candle, rejection candle, bearish engulfer, overbought. That would have been your trade to go short. Right? Eventually the market pushed down from there, 116, 15 pips or so. Um, this works on the 15 minute chart. So let's go look at, this is the one hour. Let's look at the 15 minute chart. 15 minute, that would have been the opportunity you've been looking for. Um, if you were going long, that would have been the opportunity you're looking for. Had a rejection, rejection, bullish and golfer, oversold. And that was it on that one. So, you know, that's what you're looking for on um, when you're using my trading system. So right now, I know where my target is down here. That's where I want to be looking at taking profits. All I have to do is wait for a pullback and an overbought position on the four hour. Right, so just that. That's all I'm waiting for. Um, Danielle, if... Price on daily is above 20 EMA. You're trading the four hour, right? No. Um, so if price goes above and holds between the 20 and the 50 EMA, I'm only da trading daily chart. For instance, um, yeah. This all would have been the four hour chart. At this point here, would have all been the daily until we got a trade to sell the market. Oh, bullish, yeah. Yeah, if you're bullish, then yeah. Um, prices over solar confirmation, but on one day prices over four, how do you deal with the opposite? Yeah, so you, um, so you basically just ask, you know, what if it's overbought but oversold on the other time frame, right? But overbought on the other one, you just go by based on the time frame you're trading, right? Because look at this, right? This on the daily chart was oversold, and it's been oversold this whole time, right? Just because it's oversold doesn't mean it's going to come up, um, or down if it's overbought. Um, all, all you do is just sit here and go, all right, ignore the daily for this particular part because we're only on the four hour because we're below that 20 EMA on the daily chart. So we're just looking for the daily. That's it. Uh, the four hour. That's it. That's all we care about. When price goes above that one, above the 20, then it's when you start caring about the overbought on daily. And that's it. Apart from that, ignore it. You just ignore it. Literally, just ignore it. Don't let... Um, don't let too many different 
factors stop you from getting confused? Um, pretty much, I I mean, that's all I'm really looking for. So my trading system, I mean, it's way different than a lot of people trade, right? I'm not using trend lines. I'm not using many support and resistance stuff. It's literally just trend trading, very systematical trading system where I'm just looking for trends, overbought, rejection, bearish and golfer. It's so simple. Literally, I made it so my grandma could trade, but she does, she's not very interested. Um, but it's literally that simple where that's all you're looking for. There's no need to look for anything else um, in my system. So let's, for example, go on gold. Right, gold, great example, right? Daily, we're below the um, 2050, 200. We only look for selling opportunities. We broke out from that level, right? So that was the point here. We're all starting for short. So anyway, for this one, we are coming up to a decent support. So I'm not going to be selling it here. But look where price is and go, okay, we do have a bit of a resistance up here. Price may want to come back and retest that. So four hour, we're just waiting for an oversold. Uh, overbought, sorry. That would have been your opportunities there. Right? Nothing here. Not on the four hour anyway. On here, you might have got to trade on the one hour. I don't trade the one hour, but... There was plenty of trades there on the one hour chart, right? Perfect, perfect. Zooming in. All right, let's just have a look at them a little bit more in depth. Price comes down, comes up, retest area resistance, rejection candle, bearish engulfer, overbought. Price comes down, comes up, multiple rejection candles, this is what I like, multiple. Bearish engulfer, right? Breaks past all these candles, you sell short. That's it. That's all I do. I don't do anything else apart from that. Um, and, and it works. It works very well. Okay. Is there ever bought oversold in Forex? Thought only for stocks. Isn't it a myth? I mean, yeah, look, I don't believe currencies can be overbought, oversold, but using the, um, I use it. So I didn't use it as overbought, oversold. Like I don't like, okay, the market's overbought. It has to come down. I use it to show that it's it's had a deep pullback more so than anything. So I agree with you on that one is I don't believe in overbought, oversold in general, but I use it because it shows that there's been a deep pullback rather than a little shallow pullback, right? And I prefer deep pullbacks because they're the ones that really get the trend going rather than these little trends, uh, these little pullbacks. So you can see on little shallow ones, right? Little pullbacks there, there's no overbought on a four hour. Deep pullbacks, nicely overbought. Deep pullbacks, nice overbought. So yeah, I don't use it as, but hey, we're, we're overbought, bought, if you know what I mean. The market's overbought, because I don't believe it can be. But I use it for, you know, just that. It's showing that we've had a deep pullback. And that's the only thing I use it for. Um, Josh F, could you go over your point system, adjust your risk based on the number of trades? Uh, yes, so good question. Um, so for me, I risk, half a percent per trade, right? So out of my whole capital, I only risk half a percent. Um, and I, I like to have a maximum of 2.5 exposed to the market at any given time. So that's five trades open at any given time. If I have five trades open and I see a six trade, I'm just not gonna take it because I'm prepared to lose 2.5% of my capital, but no more than that in, in one trade sitting, right? Um, I don't wanna have 10 trades open and then lose, you know, the majority of them because it can happen so i'm just going to mute you guys as, as you join it can happen where you lose you know seven trades in a row um but uh yeah i mean that's why i have to have this maximum exposure at any given time so each time i take a trade doesn't matter how wide my stop loss is i'm always risking that half a percent per trade and that ensures me that i know exactly how much i'm losing on each trade and i'm bare minimum make back one percent Right, I'm not looking for anything less than a one percent return. Um, so, in saying that, if I do lose all five, I lose two point five percent. Not a very massive, um, not a very massive uh, drawdown. But on the next trade, I literally should make it all back, or the next two trades at least. Um, so yeah, you know, I don't. Yeah, you know, that's my sort of um, risk, um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, risk. Um, what do you call it? Risk management technique. 
Um, and what was the next question there? Sorry, I'm getting a lot of questions here. Joe, what are your point? Yeah, so the next is the point-based trading system. I'll go over that point-based trading system in two seconds. Um, let me just answer this other question here. Is stochastics with FIBS good confirmation? Yes, it is. So, um, for example, I do use FIBS from time to time. So we get the pullback here. I've bought 56. I didn't look at the 56 one point. I don't care about the other two. And that's what we're looking for there, right? It doesn't have to pull back to a Fibonacci. It's just extra confirmation, that's all. It doesn't It doesn't have to though. Uh, I'm not fussed if it does or it doesn't. Um, if it's there, it's just a, a little bit of an extra confirmation, which comes into the question um, Josh asked about the points-based trading system. So um, for instance, is that a potential Fib pullback? Yeah, see this one pull back 50%, right? Oversold, blah, blah, blah. That would be a decent trade. So you can use FIBS. I do use FIBS at times as well. Um, fundamentals, funny enough, um, I know I get a lot of strife about this. A lot of people get angry at me at it because apparently you have to pay attention. I pay zero attention to fundamentals. Like I don't look at news at all. Zero. I don't use, um, I don't look at, I don't care. I'll trade two minutes before NFP. I'll place a trade. It does not bother me. Um, that stuff, I just do not look at. Um, why? My simple explanation is two things can happen. I'm either going to take my little loss quicker, so my little half percent loss. That is a really bad 0.5, uh, 0.50. I'm either going to lose that little 0.50% quicker or I'm going to hit my take profit quicker. Because there's been a lot of times where you will avoid a trade because based on fundamentals, and then you're like, damn, if I took that trade, I would have hit a profit very quickly. And there's other times where it does the opposite. We're like, mm, lucky I didn't take that trade. So give and take, I figured out in the long run, I would have been more profitable had I just ignored news. And ever since I stopped ignoring news a couple of years now, uh, my trading's excelled, you know, two times, three times better because there's less subjectivity and there's less I care about. The less I can pay attention to in trading, the, the better. I know that's very much different than a lot of people look at. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with looking at fundamentals. Lots of people, people use them very successfully and lots of people don't use them very successfully. It's really give and take what you what you like to do. If you like to use them, by all means. Um, another thing as well, I get asked a lot is, do I close trades over the weekend? I've never seen the point of closing a trade over the weekend. I've never done it just because the weekend's coming, I'm gonna close a trade. In 14 years, I've never done it. Um, and a lot of people say, just in case it gaps, right? Um, but in reality, right, if you close a trade before the weekend, how, like very rarely, I've, I've never, I've never personally experienced it in 14 years where let's say I, I sell it and I close, uh, stop losses here, take profits there and, and the market just closed up and then my, you know, we get a massive gap all the way up here. I've never, I've never experienced a gap of that big that worries me enough to, uh, that warrants me from, you know, closing my trades before the weekend. You know, if you have a, you know, half decent size stop loss, it shouldn't really worry you too much. Um, you know, I, it's just not for me. I, the less, like I say, the less I can confuse myself with trading, the better. And literally the only thing I care about is, is what I'm showing you guys right here is my trading system with the overbought, the, the rejection candles, that sort of stuff, the, the trends. The only thing I pay attention to, I don't care what Warren Buffett says. I don't care if Warren Buffett comes out and says, gold is crashing and I'm going to short it. If I see a buying opportunity, I'm going to buy it. The less you can pay attention to, in my opinion, is far better. And I know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people out there that disagree, and that's all personal preference. Literally, trading is just all personal preference. All right, back to Josh's question. Points-based trading system. So I like to have a little bit of a points-based trading system. And what that means is I like to just count up what are the odds of my trade going down in the direction that I want it to compared to from it going up. So let's use this example right here in front of us. So let's say we're, we're looking at selling, let's just um, use this example right here. Okay, let's, let's, screw it. let's say, forget, forget all this, pretend that's not there at the moment. I know it's really hard because it's right there. Um, but let's just say we're looking at this point at the moment right there in time, right? 
market's down. We know we want to sell because we're in a below the 200 EMA. So I have to come up with how many points does this go, to, uh, you know, have the potential of continuing down compared to it continuing up. One, what do we have? Point one, we have a trend. We're under the 200 EMA. So there's one trend, uh, reason for it to continue down. Two, we come up, we're overbought. There's two points right there. Uh, three, we're at 50, 61.8 percent fib. Right? There's three points for it to continue down. Um, four, price action, rejection, rejection, rejection. We'll sell it on the bearish and gold form. That would be four points for this to continue down. Right? Six points. Do we have a six point? Um, well, we have the lower high formations if you want to count that. You can, you can't count that. I mean, we already counted the trend because of the one 200 EMA, so we don't have to count that one. Um, so there's four points for it to continue down right there. Um, are we at a resistance level right here? Let's go have a look. Right, so I'm just gonna mark that area there and just look over to the left to see if we're at a resistance at the time. Uh, which one was it? Hang on, I'm just getting confused here. Get rid of those two. At the time, was that a resistance? Let's have a look. Yeah, we had a little bit of a resistance right there, right there. That's all. I know it's a looks like a um, thing, but it's, it's that area. So we did come back to resistance, right? Right there. So it's five points, right? Five points for this trade to continue down, as opposed to how many points for it to continue up. So remember, I'm going to write that down because I'm going to forget. Five points this trade is going to go down compared to how many for it to continue up, okay? So reasons that it can continue up. Okay, well, support, right? Again, this is the area we're looking at. So there's one point, right? We do have a, a little bit of a support level in its way, right? And that support level was a pretty nasty support level, rather. Right so there's one point. And that's it. Literally, there's only one point. I can't see any other reason. Do we have divergence at the time? No, we didn't have any divergence happening. Price action wise, yeah, look, there's two points there. Price action. Rejection, rejection, bullish engulfer. So there's two points as opposed to five points for it to go down. So I can safely go, all right, cool. We've got enough reasons to sell this as opposed to buy this. And again, we wouldn't even buy this because we're below the 200 EMA. Um, so two points as opposed to buying it, five points to sell it. What's a smarter idea? And it doesn't hurt. It's actually sit there and, and do this before you take a trade. Right? So just, you know, a, a lot of traders get very impulsive they like to jump the gun and just take a trade as, as, as it's lining up. They're like, oh wait, ooh, ooh, there it is right there. I've got to buy this before anything happens. And they forget to sit back and just go, why do I want to buy this? And this is me, why I like to trade daily four hour timeframes. Um, Cause I don't have to sit there on the, you know, make a quick decision on a 15 minute or five minute, right? It's too quick for me. Cause I like to sit there and just sit there and go, you know, like, you know, why should I buy this? Why should I sell this? And sometimes I'll go walk away for an hour and think about it, right? I literally, I'll do that. I'll, I'll look at the trade. I mean, I'm going to go think about this one. I'll go out. I'll have a think. I'll come back an hour later and go, yep, I'm going to sell. You, you got to really think rationally about trading, right? You can't just sit there and treat it, you know, as a, as an impulsive buy and sell button. You got to sit there and go, this is my career. This is my online business. Cause a lot of people miss, you know, um, miss that factor that it, it, that it is online online business. I forgot how to talk for a second there, sorry. It is an online business, right? Because you're profiting and losing, you're making losses online, right? Your meta trader for, your, your, your broker is your account holder, that sort of stuff. And you're trying to make a profit as opposed to losing, losing a money, right? That's an online business there and there. Um, you know, you've got millions of different types of online businesses, trading is mine. And you have to think of it in terms of that. So if you sit there and impulsively buy and sell the you know, little red and blue button, then you're not really running your business properly. You're just more running based on hope. Let's take the energy of, of let's say you own an Amazon online store and you sell stuffed penguins, right? Little penguin toys. And you buy them from a wholesaler for $2 and you try and sell them for $5 to make that little bit of profit. Now, if you go sell them from two dollars and then you got a hundred sitting there and you're just panicking, oh man, I've got to sell this hundred, just chuck them all on the line for a dollar each, then you've lost money, right? Because you didn't sit there and think, you know, what are my profit margins, what are my loss, what are my expenses, you know, all this sort of stuff. So you have to sit there and think about trading like that. You have to really think of it in terms of a, like a proper business. 
And I don't know any professional trader that doesn't run their, their, their trading like that. Um, so um, you have to get away from the impulsive decision making, right? The, where you'll see, for instance, this one right here, right? You'll see it at a support level right now go, oh man, I need to buy that. I need to buy it before it starts jumping up. I need to buy it before it starts just shooting right up. You gotta stop doing that. There's a lot of people do, do seem to, I'm not saying anyone here in particular, but lots of people do that in general. And you just gotta sit there and think rationally, like, do I have any reason to buy this? I don't, right? Because this is literally no reason to buy this. Just gotta wait for, the, for that, um, that selling opportunity still. Um, Joe, if the 20 EMA moves above the 50 and is still below the 200 EMA, do you still look for a sell? Yes, I do. Yep. So good example was that Euro dollar. So for this one, I'm still looking for a buying opportunity. Right. Probably not going to get one. Honestly, I don't expect to get one, but I'm still looking for one. Um, and basically all I'm looking for is uh, rejections out of the 200 EMA bullish and golfer, the same setup always like, what do we have fibs? I don't even know. Yeah, it's not so much a fibonacci level. Not from there anyway, but from down here, yeah, not so much either. Yeah, it's probably not the best trade. So I'm honestly, even if I see the setup, I'm most likely not gonna trade it. But my trading system says I still have to be looking at buying it. And this is how disciplined and strict you have to be. You can't be like, oh, we've been dropping three days now. I'm just gonna break my trading system rules and start looking at selling it now. You have to sit there and go, no, I have to remain strong. And provided we ran above that 200, I still have to buy it. Um, go on. The shortest time frame is one hour that you use. No, I use the daily and the four hour. Um, and I suggest everyone just pick two time frames and stick to those. You can use the four hour as a trend. So right now you'd be looking at selling it and the one hour as your entry. You can use the one hour as your higher time frame. So if the trend is on the one hour, 15 minute is your entry. Just pick two and forget the rest. Because a lot of traders do, to me, this makes no sense where you do, now top-down analysis is great, but the part that makes no sense is going from the weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15 minute, five minute for an entry. Because the five minute has really no relevance for the daily or the, or the weekly or the four hour, right? So you just pick two. Mine are the daily for the trends, four hour for the entries. You can be one hour for the trend, 15 minutes for the entry. You can be four hour for the trend, one hour for the entry doesn't really matter. A lot of swing traders like to use the four hour, one hour, because it's that still got that nice medium turn, um, you know, uh, feel to it. Like the, the, the four hour trend, the one hour entry, you still get those, you know, nice, decent long-term trades. When I say long-term, a few days. So that's pretty decent for most people. And I suggest, you know, if you don't like to long-term trade like I do on the daily, and you want us to be more so of a day trader, pick the, uh, my, High suggestion is four hour, one hour. That's what I'd, I'd say, if you want to be that day trader. So here you'd be going four hour is your entry. i uh, sorry, four hour is your high time frame. So we're below the 200 email on the four hour. One hour is your entry. So you're looking for the overbought on the one hour. And, and I'd suggest doing that if you want to do that. Um, Arimas, I hope I said your name right. I don't think I did. I thought it was good to watch four hour, one hour, for example, to enter, no. Oh, wait, you mean to watch the four hour and then the one hour, but enter on the 15 minute or five minute? No, I don't think that's the best idea because let's say you take the four hour. Now let's look at the four hour now, right? And then the one hour. So to me, you take this example right here, the 15 minute, there's, there's no real point. If you're gonna look at the four hour, one hour, and then go, I'm going to try and get a really good entry on the one um, on 15 minute, because you may get a 15 minute breakout, but you got to remember on the four hour, that could still be, for instance, this week right here, the 15 minute breakout could be that. And on the four hour could be the pullback, right? Would you then ignore one D ones? Yeah, look, if you want to pick the, um, Danielle, if you want to pick the um, four hours, your higher time frame, and the one hour is the entry, ignore the daily, right? Just ignore it. Going on. Okay, okay, I'm going to stick to the four hour one hour. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you just pick the time frames you're comfortable with. You can use the 15 minute as your higher time frame and five minutes as your entry. I don't suggest that, but you can. Not my favorite thing to do. Anyway. 
We've been blabbering on for about an hour now. I'm surprised I could talk for that long. Um, we're going to have to start coming. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. I hope you got some value out of it. Um, any questions, I'm happy to stick around for a couple questions. Um, throw them at me. Just literally just throw them out there. Um, apart from that, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I always love hosting these free webinars because it's, you know, it makes me feel good. Doing good. Doing good in the world. My little part. Um, yeah. Any questions, just feel free to hit up myself, hit up Nick, hit up Emily, hit up... Um, uh, <laughs> I forgot her name. Um, Julie. So I went mind blank for a second there. Sorry, Julie. I didn't forget who you were. Um, available recording. Um, speak to Julie about that one about the recording. How do I feel about Astro effects? I'm not gonna comment on any other um, education place out there, but I'm gonna say this, Alan, if a trader or a mentor, this is no one in particular, if they are flashing cash and cars to lure you in, then they're not a real trader. That's all I'm gonna say. They're a salesman. It's not aimed at anyone in particular. It's just old snake oil salesman um, tip. Um, could you tell us how to find a time indicator? Um, yeah, that's so, that's, I, I can't, I only give that to um, A1 members. So if you're an A1 member, I can send you it. Thanks, Joe, I appreciate that always. I'm considering you as my mentor. Thank you, Dave. Thank you a lot. All right, guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next room, hopefully. Or the VIP room, you guys. Take care. See ya. By the way, um, if you do like webinars, I do host 10 a week. 8 to 10 a week in A1. Anyway, guys. Cheers. Oh, wait. Dude, I see you. I got scanned by not real traders. You seem legit. Yeah, there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there, man. There's a lot of crappy stuff out there. And unfortunately, it's a breeding ground for people to just create a course and go, I want to make money out of this. And just, you know, do this typical snake oil sales and stuff. Ah, look at my car. Look how much money I made. Come and join me. Anyway, cheers, guys. Take care. We'll see you in the next webinar.